The Four Metre Band has always been a rather special band. But do you know, it's over 50 years since I last operated on four metres from home. 50 years or 50 years plus. Back in the 1960s, a group of us young hams, young G3s, operated on 160 metres, but we discovered four metres, a VHF band. And the reason that we discovered it was because we found that there was some something called a B44 transceiver that was available. Now, we all lived within striking distance of Chelmsford, the home of Marconi. And Marconi were dumping these B44s along with a lot of other gear at a dump near Chelmsford. Marconis didn't want these transceivers to be used again, so they decided to put a hammer through one of the IF transformers, thus disabling the transceiver so they couldn't be sort of sold on and used again. Well, we knew the guy that ran that dump, and we persuaded him that perhaps his hammer might sometimes miss that critical IF transformer. And the net result was that we picked up B44 transceivers for our own personal use and operated them on the four meter band. AM, would you believe? Yes, AM on four meters. And I think that we removed the receive crystal and made a variable frequency oscillator so that we could tune the band. And we all had to purchase a crystal to put us on particular four meter channel. That was my experience of four meters. And a group of us were motoring around jumps around Essex operating four meters. That was 50 years plus ago. Hello and uh, welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I decided to come back onto 4 meters and I'd already got the ICOM IC7300 and of course I know many of you have also got the IC7300. Good news is of course that it covers 4 meters. So all I needed was an antenna. Now there's not that many antennas for 4 meters. I wanted a Yagi. But I wanted something fairly small because I didn't really know whether I was going to be serious about four meters. And recently we took into stock some four meter antennas from the dual range. Now, although it's called dual, this particular antenna is a single band antenna. It's a two element four meter Yagi. It's very light, very well made. And I suppose to many of you, the most important thing is it's not expensive. So let me take you through the installation of this Joule 4 meter 2 element Yagi. The Joule 2 element 70 megahertz antenna comes in quite a compact box, mainly because it's not a particularly big antenna. Um, the product code is PA-70-2-0-0. Eight A. Not quite sure what all that means. I can follow the seventy megahertz and the two elements, but beyond that, I am lost. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll take this out of the box and see what you get inside. Well, it's well packed for sure, and what I'm glad to see is instructions. So uh, and they're in English, so that should be good. So all we've got to do now is to uh, <laughs> unpack it. So I was right. The instructions are in English two pages of them, very comprehensive, considering it's only two element Yagi. So let's see what's in the box. Well, we've got that which I think is the reflector, or part of the reflector. That is, I suspect, the driven element. Um, 
That is the boom, so it's not particularly long, which is ideal for me. And the remainder of the elements that uh, go on the end to resonate it on four meters. And also we've got a ballon there, which is uh, got a, an end socket and a pair of terminals there, which go onto the driven element nicely made and it looks as if it's uh, fully waterproof and of course we've got new bolts and nuts and washers and so forth so everything I need to get on four meters is there. The only problem is I've got a build in now but I don't think that will be too much of a problem. Well the first thing to do was to put the end connector on. I like end connectors um, because they're once they're on, they're on. You feel more confident with an end connector than you do with a PL259. So anyway, that's the uh, end connector uh, put on to the end of the coax feeder. Now I've mentioned before, with these dual antennas, they're well labelled. Uh, this is part of uh, one of the uh, main elements. And this is the tip of the element. And you'll notice that they're both numbered. Num number two, and I think you can see that in the camera. That is also number two, so no problem in identifying parts and where they go. Interestingly enough, I don't know if you see this on the camera, there's two holes um, in this. Um, it's not to adjust frequency, it's just to add rigidity to the uh, connection. So there's two screws that go in at 90 degrees angle. Um, this is the main element is drilled in the same way, so uh, there's no risk of the element twisting or coming loose at all. Quite impressed with that. This is the boom, and this is the point where the parasitic element goes in. If you look at the uh, boom, you'll find that there's a larger hole there, and that hole is where the bolt for the element goes through. There's two smaller holes there, and those two smaller holes locate smaller bolts that stop the element twisting. I think if I show you the um, idea, you can see that on the camera. That's the central bolt that goes through that hole. And those two thinner bolts locate in those two holes either side. It stops any twist in motion, holds the element in place. And of course, once again, it's labelled so you can't make a mistake. Now, let's look at the driven element. This is the driven element. This is an insulator that separates the either side of the dipole so that it's insulated. That bolt there goes through the boom to fasten the, the element to the boom and those two points there, those two bolts with nuts on, are the feed points. They feed the um, element via the ballon which I'll show you in a minute. This is the other end of the boom which where the driven element goes that's where the driven element sits on that point there. And this point is where the uh, end socket on the ballon sits. So if I just show you the ballon, that end socket will sit inside that housing there so it's fully waterproofed. And those two points there, now the feed points from the coax cable will feed onto the driven element. <coughs> Whoops. And this uh, small coil here is the um, basically the, 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 the ballon, it's a, a choke ballon. Now here you can see I've mounted the ballon onto the driven element and the two nuts there are nylon loaded so they're not going to come undone anytime soon. Here's the driven element now mounted with the ballon and the end socket firmly screwed in. The only problem I had was there's the plastic saddle that goes over the square boom. I didn't think it was fitting properly but in fact it needs some pressure to push that on. Once you've pushed it on it, uh, it goes on but it's quite a tight fit which is a good thing really because it won't uh, make it move but as I say that mould in there when you press it onto the boom you need some pressure it does go on and that's that's fine. And now looking at the other side of the boom, this is the uh, parasitic element which is mounted and um, basically that's it.
well that's it antenna assembled and I'll just show you now the antenna uh, in its operating position and you can see above the uh, two element uh, Yagi my dual 2 meter and 70 sems Yagi which I've done a review on um, and that works extremely well and quite a packed, compact antenna system so I've got on this mast now four 2 meters 70 sems all lightweight nicely engineered good performance and uh, what more can I say finally it's a question of does it work <laughs> well yes it does work actually um, I'm shooting this video um, at the end of May so we're getting towards the end of the sporadic E season but there are still some openings and um, well this is uh, this is the result of uh, adding four meters to my IC7300 Regular, regular contact, um, and uh, on this band, although Ken is uh, not, uh, uh, it's right down in the dip in Cheltenham, he's got all the Cotswold Hills between us and him, but... Uh, I've been changes in the, in the hobby, have I? Oh yeah, flying from 3 OJV, yeah. Yeah, well I, I, um, um, I moved QTH about... You want to say, I'm not your door, but I'll put all of this here. Uh, Golf 3 Ontario Japan Victoria Golf 3 Oscar Japan Victoria QSL? Yes, Roger. Golf 3 Ocean Juliet Victor 5x5 55 Juliet November 9 Delta Florida Yes, George 3, Oscar Japan Victoria. George 3, Oscar Japan Victoria. Roger, go 3, Oscar Japan Victoria. Oscar, my free Charlie Lima Sierra. Roger, man, thank you, report 59, very good. Locato, Japan, Norway, 99, Fox Charlie, Roger. A QSL from Golf 3, Oscar Japan Victoria. You're also very strong, 5-9er. You know, 4 metres is, is an interesting band. And it's a band that's... A lot of people now have on their radios and this antenna proves that you don't have to spend an awful lot of money in order to try it out. I have to say that uh, the last few days have been quite fun, quite interesting. Um, certainly the band has changed a lot since I was on it, uh, running AM, but uh, it's, been, it's been quite fun. Um, sporadic key obviously adds interest, but there's also some FM activity on there. And it's funny old life for ham radio. You know, everybody's got their favourite bands, and I'm not really sure why that is. But certainly bands have character, and the four meter band has character. There's no repeaters as such. There's one or two what they call parrot parrot repeaters, which is basically it records and plays back. Um, but there are no repeaters on there. It's, so basically, all the all the contacts are simplex. Uh, there's certainly some FT8 on there. <laughs> what band is there no FT8 on? But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. So if you are looking uh, to try four meters out and you don't want to spend a lot of money, then this two element Yagi fits the bill, does the job. Um, I can't play it now, but um, two or three hours ago, I was listening to the Buxton Beacon, which is around about 200 kilometers away. And I've heard it from time to time over the last few days. It only needs a little bit of a lift for me to hear it. So that's a 200 kilometer path. Um, but uh, I think that on four meters, you've got the combination of simplex contacts because there, is no, there are no repeaters. You've got the sporadic E, which occurs during the springtime. Um, a bit of sporadic -y, I guess, um, around about uh, Christmas, that sort of area, there's a bit of sporadic -y. And of course, you've got the normal propagation changes that enable you to have some DX contacts. There we are. Can't say more than that. Interesting band. I've enjoyed it. I'll probably stay on the 4-meter band. Um, I hooked up with one or two guys I hadn't spoken for years. Guys that I once operated on 160 meters with. And... Uh, I thought, that, you know, I had, a, had one or two exchanges and I thought, gracious me, not only have I not been on four metres for 
50 plus years. Some of these guys I haven't spoken to for 50 plus years, but they're still around like me. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to press the subscribe button you have. Take care, enjoy your ham radio, and I'm sure we shall be back soon talking to each other.